welcome to this course on Apache Kafka fundamentals. Right audience for this would be those who want to get familiar with Kafka, its features and high level architecture. Let's go over the content of this course. We'll start with an introduction to Kafka. This will be followed by a brief history about Kafka, how it originated and what were the use cases they were trying to solve at that point. This will be followed by different use cases which Kafka can solve. We'll introduce various Kafka APIs such as producer, consumer and stream processing API. This will be followed by components of Kafka such as topic, partitions, brokers, etc. We'll talk about installation. Finally, we'll do a recap. Apache Kafka is a distributed streaming platform. It has messaging capability, storing capability, and processing capability. When we say messaging capability, it means it can publish and subscribe to stream of records. When we talk about storing capability, it means it can store streams of record in a fault tolerant durable way. When we say processing capability, it means it can process stream of records in a real time fashion. It provides a high throughput of millions of messages per second. It can deliver really low latency to the order of 10 milliseconds. It has a built in fault tolerance mechanism. Fault tolerance is the ability of any system to remain unaffected in the event of node failure. Kafka can be configured to replicate partitions. In case of failures, the copies will be used to recover. By adding nodes or the brokers, we can achieve scalability. Kafka also is durable. So Kafka achieves durability by creating replicas and or flushing the data to disks. Kafka was originally developed by LinkedIn. It was designed with a few key features in mind. Those are simple API, high throughput and scaled out architecture. It was built using Scala and Java. At the time of publication of this tutorial, the latest version of Kafka that is available is 2.3.0. So presently there are 12,000 plus firms who are already using Kafka. Firms like Walmart, Burr, Netflix, Spotify, Coursera, DigitalOcean. These are some of the few firms who have already started using Kafka. Let's look at various use cases where Kafka can be used. Kafka can be used for messaging. Kafka can serve as a message broker. Message brokers are used to decouple producers from consumers. Message broker can act as a buffer to absorb spikes in message volumes. Kafka can be used for website activity tracking. The user activity on a website is published to topics which are generally separated by activity type. The activity can be search, page views or submit. These topics can then be subscribed to for real time processing and storage etc. Log aggregation. Kafka can be used to collect logs from distributed application and store them in a centralized place. The data will be more structured compared to Flume or Scribe. Kafka offers stronger durability and lower latency. Stream processing. Kafka finds good use in creating data processing pipeline. Raw data is consumed and processed from the topics and published to new topics. It allows to create pipeline architectural pattern. Event sourcing. It's a design pattern where state changes are logged as time ordered sequence of records. Kafka fits this pattern since it allows to store very large log data. Finally, metrics. Kafka can be used to collect metrics and monitor them for a distributed application. Let's look at different Kafka APS. We have Kafka cluster. Producer are applications which are using the producer API of Kafka. So we have one or more apps. These apps are publishing to the cluster. We have consumers app. So consumer apps are 
apps that are using the consumer API of Kafka. They are able to read the messages from the Kafka cluster. So the apps using Stream Processor API will be able to read from certain topics and write to certain topics. We'll discuss more about topics later on. As you can see, the arrows are bi-directional here. So which means they are reading from certain topics and also writing to certain topics. Then we have connectors. Kafka provides connectors so that external application without using any of the APIs can be able to push data to the cluster as well as pull data from the clusters. And of course, there can be one or more connectors. So what is a producer? Producer is an application that uses Kafka producer API to publish messages. The producer can publish to one or more topics. So what is a topic? Think of topic as a virtual pipe. So producer publishes a message or messages to topic. Consumers subscribe to a topic to read the messages from the topic. There can be multiple producers publishing to one or more topics. Similarly, there can be consumers who are subscribed to one or more topics. So in this example, we have producer one, which is publishing to only one topic, whereas producer two is publishing to both the topics, topic A and topic B. On this side, we have consumer one, which is subscribed to only one topic, whereas consumer two is subscribed to topic A as well as topic B. What is a partition? When we create topic, we also create partitions. If you think of topic as a pipe, then partitions can be thought of small pipes inside that topic as shown in the diagram. When a message is published to the topic, Kafka will put them in one of the partitions. So in this example, we have a topic which contains n partitions. So hence we are having n pipes and message produced by the producer. It is publishing to this topic. Hence the message will be routed into one of the partitions. Let's understand the message routing in Kafka. Consider we have topic A with three partitions. There's a producer which is publishing to topic A. Now let's see what happens when producer produces the messages. So you can see producer has published a message A which is routed to partition 0. Next B is routed to partition 0. C is routed to partition 1. D is routed to partition 2 e is routed to partition 0, f is routed to partition 2, g is routed to partition 0, h is routed to partition 1, i is routed to partition 2. So you can see that Kafka is routing the messages by its own algo. Each of these messages are assigned a unique number within a partition and that is called offset. So in this case, all these red numbers are the offsets. So A has offset of 0, B has offset of 1, E has offset of 2, and this will be sequential. Now one thing to note here is that Kafka determines the routing for the messages within a partition. Fetching such messages will not guarantee the order. This might be okay with analytics application, but consider an application where ordering of the message is important. Example of such application can be loan approval workflow the consumer must process them in the same order as they were produced. Kafka provides a simple solution to order the messages. Specifying a key when publishing the message will guarantee the order. So the message with same key will be routed to the same partition. So in this case, had we published the messages with same key, they would have gone to one of the partitions. Hence, consumer reading from that partition will receive them in the same order. In the use case of a loan approval workflow, we can use loan ID as the key. Hence, the messages with the same loan ID will maintain the relative order. Let's understand what is a broker. Here, we have a topic A, which is divided into three partitions, partition 0, partition 1 and partition 2. Topic B has got two partitions, partition 0 and partition 1. Now, 
each of these partitions have to be on certain server. So in this case, yellow box denotes one server, another yellow box is another server, and this is the third server. So each of these boxes are called brokers. So what is a broker? Broker is a server. It is also called as a node. It mediates between producer and consumer. It hosts one or more partitions. As you can see, broker 0 is hosting partition 0 of topic A and partition 0 of topic B. Broker 1 is hosting partition 1 of topic A and broker 2 is hosting partition 2 of topic A and partition 1 of topic B. It is stateless. In Kafka, Zookeeper is used to maintain the state. Let's understand what are in sync replicas. Assume we have topic A with three partitions. They are spread out to broker 0, 1, and 2. In a typical distributed architecture, failures are common. Consider that broker 0 goes down. So we'll be losing partition 0 data for topic A. And there is no way to recover it. Can something be done to mitigate the risk? Yes, one possible way to mitigate this risk is to create copies of this particular partition. But where do we store that copy? Storing on same broker is still risky since if broker goes down, we will lose both the copies. Storing on a different broker will make perfect sense. We are creating copy of partition 0 on broker 1. Similarly, for a partition 1, we are creating a copy on broker 2. And partition 2, which is on broker 2, we are creating a copy on broker 0. So that way, if any of the broker is down, the system will still be able to function as usual. The partitions which are marked L are the leaders. The partitions which are marked F are the follows. So topic is replicated to avoid or recover from failures. Replication factor is specified when a topic is created. Leader is responsible for read and write from that partition. The other partition is called in sync replica. Consider we have topic A which is spread across three partitions partition 0, partition 1, and partition 2, and topic B which is spread across two partitions partition 0 and partition 1. And you can see these partitions belong to broker 0, broker 1, and broker 2. Let's say we have consumer 1 and consumer 1 is subscribed to topic A and topic B. So they'll read data from topic A and they'll read data from topic B. Let's say consumer 2 is subscribed only to topic B. So in that case, they'll be reading the data from topic B, partition 0 and partition 1. So consumer is an application that reads data from brokers. It can subscribe to one or more topics. Consumer group is a group of consumers. In this example, let's say we have topic A, which is spread out to two partitions, partition 0 and partition 1. And we have topic B, which is again spread out to partition 0 and partition 1. Now we can create a consumer group and have multiple consumers. So in this case, we have C0, C1, C2, C3 in consumer group A. Now each consumer group can subscribe to one or more topics. So let's assume that consumer group A is subscribed to topic A and topic B. So in this case, C0 is going to read data from partition 0. C1 will be reading from partition 0 of topic B. C2 will read from topic A partition 1. And C3 will read from topic B partition 1. As you can see, we have four consumers in this particular group. And total partitions across topic A and topic B is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So each consumer is able to read only from one partition. So if total partitions is equal to total consumers, each consumer will get data only from one partition. Let's say we introduce one more partition in topic A. So now topic A has got partition 0, 1, and 2. Total number of partitions across A and B is 5. 3 plus 2, 5. So in this case, if consumer group A is subscribed to topic A and topic B, who reads the data from topic A partition 2? So Kafka is going to decide that. So in this case, C3 is going to read from two partitions, partition 2 and partition 1. 
So if there are less consumers, some of the consumers will read data from more than one partition. Now let's say we have another consumer group. We call it consumer group B and it only has one consumer in it, C4. So if consumer group B is subscribed to topic B, as you would imagine, partition 0 topic B, partition 1 topic B will be read by C4. So what is the significance of consumer group? Typically in a multi-partition topic, parallelism can be achieved by having multiple consumers in a group. This will increase the effective throughput. This is a very unique feature that makes Kafka stand out with respect to other messaging brokers. Zookeeper in Kafka has several functions. Zookeeper also assists in leader election. So when the node goes down, the ISR will be used. When the node goes down, Zookeeper will determine which of the ISR partitions will be elected as a leader. Zookeeper also maintains node and topic registry. It stores the information about the nodes and the topics for the cluster. The installation for Kafka is pretty straightforward. First, we can go to this URL and download the tar gzip file. Once you are able to download this, unzip it into a folder. Then sudo to that particular folder. Now there are two things that we need to start. One is the zookeeper. So here is the command to start the zookeeper. And second, we need to start the Kafka server. Here is the command to start the Kafka server. Note that if you are running on Windows, you will need two command prompts to start each of the servers. Next, let's try to create a topic. So in order to create a topic, you have to specify the broker. We have to specify the replication factor. So here we have specified it as one, just for the demo purpose. We have to specify the number of partitions. So here we have specified one. And we have to specify the name of the topic. In this case, it is test. Once we have created a topic, we can use that topic to publish messages. So here is the command to publish the message. So we are again specifying the broker, the name of the topic to which the message should be published. So once we hit enter on this command, it will give us a prompt and in that we can enter one or more messages to be published. Once the messages are published, we can actually start a consumer to receive the messages. So here is the command to start the consumer. So we specify the broker, we specify the topic name and we say from beginning. We want to read all the messages from the beginning. So once we do it, it will show us the messages available in that particular topic. Let's do a quick recap. So Kafka provides a distributed streaming platform. It provides capability for messaging, storing and processing. It provides high throughput, low latency, fault tolerance, scalability and durability. Producers publish messages to a topic, whereas consumers subscribe to the topics and receive messages. Topics contain one or more partition. Broker is a server and cluster is a collection of brokers. Data is distributed parallelly to the consumers in a consumer group. Thanks for taking this course. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments about this course, feel free to add comments. Please do subscribe to our channel so that you would get notified when new courses are available. Happy learning from Codex team.